Okay, so this, all right, this video is going to be about the 1970 through 72 Chevelle with round gauges clock. This is the clock video, okay? I found out that you cannot buy a quartz conversion kit for this. They do not sell it. I, for 10 years, thought that they did. They don't. So evidently, this is some other brand, not the Borg Borg clock that they sell uh, kits for. Okay. The, so I'm going to go over the things you need to know about these clocks. All right. They run 24 hours a day, which is bad. They have a point system in there. I'm going to go through and show you in depth. And what happens to points? The points click, 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 and go bad. They corrode. They get little burn things on them. I don't know. If you don't understand that, take a freaking screwdriver and just touch your uh, battery. Put it on the on one side and just keep arcing that freaking screwdriver. And you'll see what happens. Okay? That's what's going on 24 hours a day. You can hear the click in here. That's what it's doing. And I'm going to try to show you the best way that I know how to get this thing kind of restored, okay? Number one, we are not going to run this clock 24 hours a day. It is going to come on with the key. So we're going to have to rewire it. And we're going to have to change the time every time we drive it. This is a weekend driver car. I might only drive it every two weeks. I might not even drive it in the summer at all, okay? So keep that in mind. If you have a daily driver, go ahead and buy you the clock. This is just for one. Every time we drive, we're going to have to do that. Because the problem with these from the factory is if you've been watching those little points contact, they literally are arcing. They are arcing. I'm going to turn the um, light off whenever we get close to them so you can actually see what is going on. What I've done here is I have literally taken a distributor, an old points distributor that I had, took the freaking points out, took a Dremel tool, ground them down until they fit in there, and I have soldered distributor points in there, okay? And I'm going to take it all apart. I'm going to show you what I did. It's a bitch. It's very hard. You're going to have to play around with this clock and get familiar with it before you, you uh, just start going in there and soldering. All this stuff is delicate, but it's not too delicate. I'm going to turn the light off so you can see the arc. And I just want you to understand what's going on here. So you have 12 volts. See that arc? Okay. And that's what it's constantly doing for, for all day. And that's why none of these clocks freaking work. But the thing about these clocks is that almost every single one of them is perfect. And there are some nerds in the blog that say don't spray WD-40 on these. I didn't spray WD-40, but I sprayed some stuff in here like this. And I, sw I, I, I just had to just give them a bath because they've been seized up for who knows how long you know probably 40 years so you're gonna have to figure that out on your own okay the main point of why I have these two clocks is because if we are going to shut the car off for periods of time we need to make damn sure that we when we re-energize this when we hit the key switch that the clock comes back to life okay because Whenever you're, you're, you're resurrecting one of these, you have to give it a bath and some kind of lubricant, but you're going to have to play with this little wheel right here. Let's see that arc again. God dang it, you missed it. You're going to have to play with this wheel again until it gets where it wants to do that because it, it'll be stuck. And now I pretty much got these <clears throat> where they work, but let's go ahead and hook the current up to the other one and let's see if it comes to life and if it comes to life then we are headed in the right direction but if it doesn't all right let's watch it let's see if it comes to life it came to life okay so basically what's going on here is these two are completely from different cars the one I thought was going to be good was bad, and the one I thought was a piece of shit ended up being good, okay? So, um, that's what we want. Like, this one's been shut off, and we want to start the car up and just go in there and adjust it, whatever. It's fine, okay? And 
I've already checked the accuracy of that with my iPhone, and boom, it is freaking boom dead on. Okay, so these, I know this these clocks work. Okay, so they're not out of, out of calibration. Because this is what was confusing me the most was what the hell is even going on with this freaking clock, okay? The contacts start getting close. It's gonna throw, watch the ratchet thing. About to do it, there it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to take, to take apart your Chevelle clock. First thing you want to do is you want to get you a fork to eat with. Not to eat with, but to take these freaking things off. But you need to get you a piece of cloth, a fork, and you're going to have to figure out some kind of a, uh, of, uh, what would that be called? Like a, man, I don't freaking remember what that's called. A lever, a fulcrum, I don't know, whatever it is. Figure you some kind of system out here. Well, you're not going to scratch this up, okay? I've already taken these off. You got to gently be gentle with it. And then, boom, just, you know, keep trying to... Trying different methods until you can get this to come off. Ah. All right. Now, these, you need to be very damn careful. I took one of them off and it didn't do anything. But the second one I took off this one, it pulled the freak and knocked the paint right off the freaking needle. So I'm gonna have to buy some. You can buy that paint, but just kind of grab these. Don't grab it. Do not grab it at the end. You will break the paint off. Kind of grab it from here. Something, but pretty much you're probably gonna have to repaint these anyway. So, and they just kind of they just kind of slide on. See, they have adjustments on there. So yeah, don't be, don't be mad if you knock the paint off them because one of them didn't the paint didn't come off and the other one the paint just fell right off. Okay, get that like that. Okay, now you're gonna need some kind of needle nose pliers or something, and you're gonna have these three uh, like twisted factory whatever. Figure out a way to get these out. Uh, you're just all right. All right. And what I do with this, be damn, be very careful with this, is I just give them a bath and comment. I, I take some comment and just give them a finger bath, but a soft finger bath, like a baby, because you do not want to scratch this up. And you can, uh, this one's fine. Both of my clock faces, oh, sh we're in really good shape. So <sighs> once you get this out, the Pokemon looks like Pikachu. You you need to oh yeah be careful there's this little washer here and then there's a spring put that somewhere safe okay you're gonna have to take you get to figure some kind of method out but it's gonna have these things like pinched in so figure some kind of method out to bend this out okay so all you do here is you're just trying to free that and it's gonna come right oh yeah oh yeah. Before you take that out, take this screw off, I mean this nut, save this, you're going to want to clean all this off perfect, clean all that off, make damn sure you get this little, uh, whatever the hell that washer's called, that out of there before you start trying to pull on this stuff. Alright, once you get that where it looks clean like that, you can, you can, this is going to come right off. All right, now you can just put that away for now. Don't need you get that like that, you're gonna get you a small screwdriver and you're gonna take these three screws off right here. One, two, three. And be careful because this gear is gonna wanna jump out and unwind, but don't worry about any of that. Just watch what I do. Get these three screws off and take care of them because they're special screws. All right, we start taking that third one off. Start holding it down. OK, 
okay? All right, you get that third one off. Now right, you're gonna kind of turn it right like that where this gear's facing you. And you're gonna be careful, you're gonna hold this down right here because it's gonna, the one that's got this little spring right here, this little spring, hold this down because it's gonna wanna jump out, all right? Just put that over here for now and see watch what it does. It's gonna try to unwind that spring. Just let it unwind, it don't matter. You're gonna, all right. Be careful with it, but it's pretty strong. Get this little spring, get this little thing out of here for now. Figure out how, to come, how it comes off, it just unhooks. All right, now you got this little piece right here. And we can start looking at the first, the main contact. Well, the contact. This is an original contact. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Yeah. All right. All right. Now this one, the one that I made, you could see that points contact. How it looks looks better and it's kind of soldered the best I could get it. It's a bitch. This stuff is really tiny. So that's the bad contact from the factory. I don't know. I may have cleaned this off. It looks like it's pretty clean. So I think I may have ground this one down. So you can see the difference. But you can see that All right, so I had to figure some way, and this is the best way I could do it, but uh, this this contact off of the distributor is actually pretty big, so I've already had to ground, I ground it down as much as I could get it, but I want a big fat contact on there. It looks kind of stupid, but it, it, it works. Okay, so I got the big contact on there, because if you look at the, okay, so these are the two contacts side by side. You can see how, this the original one is real small and I had already ground this down for some reason I was trying to flatten it out but the points uh, the, the points distributor contact is big and be careful because I had to take a Dremel and shave it all down to, to clear but this is what I came up with it's got a big fat contact on there now and it's from a distributor so you know damn well it's not gonna that it's made for the, this kind of uh, these conditions at least Okay, the other side of this is going to be, this is the bitch. This is the hard one. This is really the hard one. I took one of the point contacts and it was already, it was already corroded a little bit. Okay, and I'm telling you right now, you cannot pull this out. It's, this is where you're going to have to solder it. Okay. And this one is a bitch to do this one. But you can see how it's got a bigger contact. Let me see if I have the other one to show you. Oh yeah, here, I can show you. Now we got factory contact. Yeah, and that factory one ain't been touched. You can see how it's, it's like warped. Oh yeah, you can see good right here. Yeah, it, it's like melted halfway. So that's what happens to these clocks, man. It's these these contacts, and so that's basically an understanding of what's happened. I honestly think if somebody was going to restore one of these clocks, this is how they would do it, okay? But I don't know. I'm not a clock expert. I'm not claiming to be. So I'm going to show you how to get this thing back together. I've done a few tests, and I found out that this spring needs to be wound maximum, okay? So I'm going to just give you an idea on how to wind this spring to the max. All right, put it back where it goes. It goes on this little whatever stud thing. All right, I need, uh, <clears throat> this is winding the spring, the spring thing up right here. So I'm working in a weird position, so sorry. You're gonna hook it on your, make sure it goes in there, the, you have it in there the right way, like this, only goes on there one way. Hook this uh, spring, figure out how to get it hooked. All right, once you get it hooked, you can kind of wind it up a little bit, whatever. 
I'm going to show you how to wind this spring and how to set it. Pretty simple. Okay. Find where it goes in here. Hook it back up. All right. Now we're going to we're going to find where it sits in there. Right there, hold it. And you can see that spring's already causing that thing to want to co to come on, all right? So you're going to want to wind the spring up like this. Just like if the points were were firing wind that spring up. It's hard to show you. Wind the spring up until it stops until it's out of until it wind the spring up until you can feel it doesn't want to wind anymore right there both of these clocks they both stopped at the same place all right now you can either let it just leave it alone like that it should so after you have wound this up as far as it would go which is going to be somewhere about right there you can go ahead and let it go make sure it's going to clear this and make sure it's going to when it comes around here it's going to clear this because after you weld that that point on there like i did you i had to go back and, and grind it off because it wouldn't clear either one of these so whenever the points hit or whatever it's never going to knock it back here but it will knock it to about right here okay so you go ahead and put your piece back on there and uh, see what happens. Oh right, yeah, and it comes to life. And like I said, oh yeah, it's gonna clear that one. That was the only issue. After you soldered, after I soldered all my stuff on there, this was a lot fatter, so it wouldn't clear through here. Okay, so it's working. I just kind of wanted to go over that spring because, trust me, it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> All right, so the clock is back together and it's working and I'm really glad I took the time to put those distributor points in there because I feel a lot better now. So, just want to prove to you that it is working. And when you do this, um, you want to leave this, you want to bench test this for a week or something. You know, like just make damn sure it's working for you to put this in your car. Don't just go put this straight in your car because you may have trouble, um, you know, with something in there, you know. But, Anyway, I'm confident. I like it. I'm happy. I saved me 150 bucks. And I just want to share this with you. Um, thank you. I'm out.